Now, everybody knows that Germany is one of the world's great soccer countries. Obviously, they've won four men's World Cups. They've won two women's World Cups. They have an amazing league, the Bundesliga, which is the best attended soccer league in the world. The atmosphere is amazing at their games. And there's a real sense of public mission in German soccer that you don't see in other countries. Can you imagine if the Knicks had open training sessions? <laughs> In recent years, German soccer has also become the best place in the world for young players to come and develop and get opportunities to play at an extremely high level. And that includes players from the United States. Following the example set by Christian Pulisic, most of the best young players from America are playing in Germany now. So we're here in Germany traveling around. We're really excited about getting to see them in Munich, Leipzig, Dortmund, and Gelsenkirchen. So this should be a really cool trip to get a sense of what it's like for a young American to play in Germany and what their experiences are, but also what they've learned about Germany as a soccer culture that makes Germany unique. Am I a go here? No. Am I? I can't see. Shit, that says I'm totally confused. Ay, ay, ay. We're starting our trip in Munich, which is in the south of Germany. Very traditional Bavarian city, very traditional German soccer culture. We're going to go see Chris Richards, who is a very young American who recently just transferred to Bayern Munich from FC Dallas. And he's a really promising defender who is just getting going in his career. He's playing mostly with the under-19 team for Bayern Munich right now, but uh, Bayern Munich is one of the greatest teams in Europe. So it's a pretty big accomplishment for Chris Richards that he's already playing in Bayern's system. So Chris, this place is beautiful. New stadium here where the under-19 team for Bayern Munich plays. Where are you from and how did you get here to Bayern Munich? So I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. I played with two amazing academies in both Houston and Dallas and then came on loan to Bayern. And it's a big responsibility being a Bayern player, but uh, it's, it means a lot to me. You're a teenage American kid coming to one of the biggest clubs in the world. How different is the daily culture here around a soccer team than it was for you in the United States? Uh, it's very different. So um, even kids my age, they're not really going to school. Their whole life is focused around football. And so um, back home at Dallas, we would train and go to school and then have the rest of the day off. Or here, you might have two a days, or really your whole day is just focused around training, so doing extra work and things like that. I know you're picking up German. Mm -hmm. How does that go? Yeah, it's going pretty well. Uh, so I have about an hour lesson every day with uh, a German teacher who comes here and teaches us foreign players. Mm -hmm. And he finds uh, a lot of ways to like interact with us and keep it interesting. So it's been really good. At a certain point, you're probably going to have to be interviewed in German. Yeah. Uh, how close are you to being able to do that? Um, the vocabulary is probably the hardest part for me. but. Yeah. Um, you know, you just pick that up just talking with people. So um, hopefully by the end of the season, I could get maybe a little interview in, in German. Uh, that's, that's my goal, at least, for, okay. for my German. There's always, when I talk to American guys playing in Germany, things from home that they really miss, that they like to have their family bring when they come over. Mm -hmm. For you, what are those things? Oh, I mean, Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, just <laughs> little snacks. They're so tasty. Uh, they don't have them here. And so uh, those, like, when my family comes or when someone from back home comes, I always ask to bring just little snacks for me. How do you see sort of potentially your pathway here to getting to where you want to be? So, I mean, I want to be one of the best defenders in the world, and I want to help bring our national team to a World Cup and win a World Cup, and also I want to help Bayern win Champions League and win as many trophies as we can win. So hopefully my path of the first team comes soon. I've been to Germany before lots of times, but I've always traveled by train. There's something special about a road trip 
where you get very familiar with the different parts of a country and taken sort of the scenic route along the way. One, because we have time and also because it's really pretty. There's real value to getting in a van driving around this country. They love their Autobahn, which has no speed limit in most parts. They cling tightly to that in a way that Americans cling to some of their freedoms. Yet, it's the slow parts of the day, like right about now, when it's pretty great to just stop for a second and look around at the scenery. And Germany, not bad, not bad at all. Hit the curb. Can I even get through here? In, in 200 meters, turn right onto Neckerstrasse. Now we're heading toward Leipzig in the former East Germany. And RB Leipzig, owned by Red Bull, is one of the best teams in the German Bundesliga. And they have two Americans as of this season. Tyler Adams is 20 years old, just moved over and has gotten off to an amazing start. And he's not only playing and starting, they're winning with him in the lineup. And Jesse Marsh, who was Tyler Adams' head coach with the New York Red Bulls, and came over this season to become an assistant coach for RB Leipzig. His hope was to become a European head coach. And in just one season, he has already accomplished that goal as next season he'll be in charge of Red Bull Salzburg in Austria. It's just a different example of Germany being this land of opportunity for American soccer people. Your guys seem to really enjoy training, which like, you're in the middle of a long season. Yeah. It's, we've had to bring more energy. Yeah. In, the, in the fall, they call it the Hinrunde, mm -hmm. which is the first round when you play all the teams. And to be honest, Tyler brings energy, yeah. you know? Like, he's changed a little bit the way that guys come every day because he just naturally has mm. such high energy level and, and he demands a lot of himself every day to come to training and give everything. So, it's been good. It's been good for him, I think, obviously, coming here, but it's been good for our group to see him and right. feed off of him. Nice to be 20. Yeah. This is a nice little place. Never been here before. Jesse must have been here before to pick this. You know, I, I, before before like I go in and I order something, I always practice in German like what I what I'm gonna order, right? The key is like what they're gonna tell you back, because then you need to be able to understand like what to say next. I just let Jesse in, order for me. <laughs> so obviously we have this fairly cool situation. You guys go back a ways. Mm -hmm. um, what are sort of your first memories of each other? It was pretty early on. It goes way back. I mean, I was only 15 and a half at the time or just about to turn 16. And, you know, obviously you get excited and your eyes light up when, when you, you can put pen to paper on a professional contract at that age. Um, so that's what I was, that's, that's my earliest memories for that. Yeah, no, that's, you know, this is the first time when, when we got to see him play live. And Dennis and I walked away from the game like giddy, <laughs> excited to get Tyler into our system. And, you know, he was even at 15, like I say, he's, he's an adult for a 20 year old. But even at 15, you could see he had something special, something different. And that's what I think defines Tyler even more than his football abilities. It's, he's a unique personality and a mature personality. How much has it been helpful in your adjustment here to have Jesse and his family here? It's been amazing, although I haven't taken him up on dinner yet. I mean, I told you this, but I, we've invited him to dinner twice and he bailed both times. <laughs> so he can talk about his private life. He was doing okay because he's skipping out on... <laughs> I was catching up on sleep. Two of the two, of the two times, I think. <laughs> the third time might be the charm. I'm not sure. I, getting him here is a major... I think he came here for you, but Actually, not for me. Technically, I did take you up when Sarah was here. But yeah, 
for real. I think that it, it was someone that was willing to take me in as a 15, 16 year old and help develop me. And we, we've created such a, a good personal relationship that, you know, before I came here, we, we had exchange phone calls and, and talk about, you know, the, the positives and the negatives that you're going to endure while you're here to see his wife and his kids, familiar faces in a, in a city that, that's small but seems so big now because you're, you're new. To have someone like this here to help you with this journey is, is tremendous. In some ways, I think, man, it'd be a lot easier to go to England. <laughs> 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 the language and the cultural differences aren't as stark. And comparatively to New York or New Jersey, where we came from, um, yeah, there's, there's a million things that are different. And there are lonely days. Yeah. There are lonely days, right? And you kind of have to fight through that. And, and I think the more that you continue to drive yourself to, to find those bright moments, the, the more that you feel rewarded by it. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, you've had such an easy transition. It really hasn't been easy. Riding the ups and downs and, you know, being patient is key. And, and for me, I'm not a very patient person. I'm eager to get on the field and, and make a difference. Now that I'm settled in a, a bit more, every day I wake up and, I, and I'm in a good routine and I'm, it's just to work. And then you go home and you relax and you wake up, you go to work the next day. Like, I enjoy what I do. And I think that's the most important thing. Like when you can say, you know, you play soccer for a living, every day you go out there and you have a smile on your face, like that's the most important thing for me. Germany's not just one country. It's like, yeah. it's these all different regions and what it means to be in these different regions. And Germans are very attached to their, to their home city, right? Where they're from, they have a lot of pride in their region. I mean, it's big everywhere, but the relationship between clubs and, and fans is massive here. And that's been kind of a weird change for me is like, we have like four practices a week maybe that are open practices. And yeah. you walk out to practice and you see a thousand fans like, just right there, just watching training. And I think it's a great thing. A lot of good stuff happening. Yeah. 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 For real. Yeah. yeah it's cool. pretty cool. Just spending time with Jesse Marsh and Tyler Adams, you feel like you're in on the start of something big. And you come away thinking the sky's the limit for Tyler Adams as a player, that this kid is going to do good things for RB Leipzig, but he may do things for a really big club before too long. Now, Germany is not tiny. There's lots of different regions, different looks. I've really enjoyed on this trip is getting to stop in some of the smaller towns along the way as we're driving from bigger city to bigger city. There's some really cute places. You get a real sense of what the history is. Just getting a chance to see the country and along the way talk to people who are living it every day. Oh, are you angry? Yes, very. That's very good. Perfect. Thank you. You are welcome. Driving around Germany, it's just very pleasant. I just missed my turn. Fuck. Can I go backwards? Now we're going to head up to Berlin, where we can get a sense of the most international city in Germany and how they experience the culture of soccer. And we're going to do that through a friend of mine named Musa Okwanga, really interesting guy who is a sports writer, soccer writer, but also a public performer, an essayist, does music. So Musa, we're here in Berlin. I am so excited to finally meet you in person. My You're pleasure. someone I've gotten to know pretty well, I think, on Twitter over the years. Right, and yeah, the yeah. wonderful thing about Twitter is meeting folks, but then finally meeting them in the flesh. So. Yes. My pleasure. <laughs> Glad you can make it to Glorious Berlin. <laughs> what Berlin does and Germany as a country is it's, it's a city of extreme passions and, and a country of extreme passions mm -hmm. in, in, in good and bad ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the best thing about Germany is the sense of community spirit. 
So yeah. you know, the markets here, you know, it's one of our local markets. You have this, you know, in the football culture, this incredible desire to see the youth flourish. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the results. It's not just about competing. It's about how we compete. It's about mm -hmm. how we conduct ourselves. And that, I think, is, is the best of the country. In terms of the soccer football culture, what's different about Germany? What makes Germany Germany? Germany really cares about, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but the fan experience. So there's a real emphasis to make season tickets affordable, away trips affordable. The soul, soul of Berlin is in these amateur clubs huh. and, the, and the Sunday league, the amateur leagues, because football is something here which is, it's not a, um, a fanatical thing here, yeah. because, you know, the city has so many other distractions apart from football, but I think it's a thriving vein of the city. You know, Berlin is interesting socially, politically, culturally. You've got an international development hub here. Mm -hmm. You've got a great football hub here. You've got an amazing art scene, poetry, music. Is the culture here welcoming of different opinions, different approaches? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would say the, the political debate is very vigorous. It could benefit from an ever wider range of voices. You know, Germany is a country which sees a lot of newcomers. And I think the more of us that are involved in that discourse, the better. I've got to say, like, I've been really welcomed here. I've written actually for both conservative and progressive publications. That's a great example to anyone coming here. You know, if you do your thing and try and fit in, it can be a challenge here, of course. There's many challenges here, especially as a black person. You know, there are challenges uh, every, every so often. It, you have pause for thought, but the people that love you here, they utterly embrace you and they're, they're the reason I'm still here. The great thing about Germany is it's a decentralized country. There's so many great regions you can make a life yourself. So I hope that a lot of players look at Germany, not just as a place to play football, but as a lifestyle choice in the medium to long term. And if they do that, then there's no reason why they can't flourish. Well, what's clear about Germany, and we're halfway through our trip now, is how there's a real pride in each region. It's not the biggest soccer city in terms of the Bundesliga, and yet there is a, a football culture here. There's a real energy about Berlin that is kind of intoxicating. And if I was going to pick up and, and move from where I live in New York, this would be right near the top of the list. So we're on our way to see Weston McKenney. He's uh, another young, emerging talent uh, from the United States, another guy from Texas, who's been playing the last couple of years at Schalke and broke through a couple of years ago, has established himself uh, on a team that's been playing in Champions League this year. He's so clearly, McKenney's an important guy. He's kind of like a Swiss army knight for Schalke, plays literally about every position on the field except goalkeeper. And his, his movement up the ranks at Schalke has been very quick to the point where I don't know if Weston McKenney is going to be at Schalke that much longer, but that's a good thing in a sense that, you know, he's going to go on to even bigger and better things. If we were talking 10 years ago, England would have been viewed as sort of the place for promising young American soccer players to go to. And now that's clearly German. Yeah. What happened? Oh, I think, I think England kind of got the perception of, of a lot of players would go there and be looked over. And you know, if the player wasn't good enough, then they go on loan. And I don't think it was really a promising land for for uh, youth soccer yeah. as far as Americans. Right. And Germany, on the other hand, I mean, Christian came over here and kind of set the, 
the path, I would, I would say. I mean, it was set before by many other players, but, mm -hmm. you know, for the recent time in, in soccer that we have in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And whenever you see that as a player in America, then you're like, okay, you know what, that's a realistic opportunity. Of course, it comes with, you know, spreading the word, too. Yeah. I mean, you get guys in, coming in the national team camp that, you know, such as Tyler or Joss that, that you know, has asked me about it. Right. You know, how is it over there? How's the... You know, the culture, how's the, the soccer, how, what do you tell how they accept it. I tell them, dude, it's, it's amazing. I was like, you, I mean, if you want to go somewhere, I'd, I'd come to Germany because, I mean, it, it's true. You, you get opportunity. Yeah. You get uh, people that, that you know, don't just buy you just because your your name or just because of what you've done already. I mean, they buy you because they actually see potential in you. I also told him it's a lot of running and tactics too, because yeah. uh, <laughs> it is <laughs> so much running and so much tactics. <laughs> you know, I, I try and talk to to the younger guys as much as I can. You know, the guys that are coming over here. If there's one thing I could to give advice for, just for them coming through this process. I would say honestly, just because you get over here and just because you know you get a contract with the 19s doesn't mean you've done it i mean all around the world there's a small percent that makes it from the 19s a small percent that makes it from the academy and you have to be a person that has a mentality every day every training i give 100 percent they just have to really realize that they decided to make this jump and they really have to look back at where you know what they went through before they came here me, that was always my fuel. Mm -hmm. Realize, you know, all the sacrifice I went through, all the sacrifice my family went through to get me to this point. And like I told you before, I, I, I didn't have a B plan. Yeah. I had an A plan, and that was to go pro. Nothing could stop me from, from going on that path, nothing. I walked in the stadium the first time, and I was like, oh yeah. This is, what I, this is what I need. I don't want to, I need it. <laughs> you know, 60,000, 70,000 fans playing in front of him. And, and, you know, and if you look at, you know, Christian. Yeah. He came over here. He went through the same process earlier than me. He was a person, you know, went into training, did what he had to do, did extra work if he needed to. He knew what he wanted. You know, being that age, making that jump over here like he did, you really, really have to believe in your abilities and you really have to, you know, know what you're worth and you know look where he's at now he's going on a transfer to uh, one of the biggest clubs in the world on the biggest transfer for an American soccer player mm -hmm. so I mean it's, it's, it's actually now that I'm speaking about it, it's interesting to think about you know where we started to where we are like I said I've known him since I was 13 years old yeah. it's one of those things you know you look back and you look at the journey that you, you've been on and you're really thankful for for how it's gone and, and what you've been through and the people you went through it with. So. Is there a feeling that with you guys being over here in Germany and then most of you playing on the national team together at this point as we start a new four-year World Cup cycle, is there a feeling amongst you guys that you want to put the U.S. men's national team sort of back on the map? Definitely, that's one of our goals. I mean. I was just thinking about it today. Uh, most of the players now, because we're starting the new cycle and most of us are the same age or one year, two year difference. If you think about it, most of us will be in our primes, as you would say, 26, 27, come time for 2026 World Cup in America. Mm -hmm. And our goal, if they let me speak for them as well, hopefully, uh, our goal, I mean, of course, is, is to go as far as we can. But I, I think for us, we just want to help develop soccer in America as well. Because, you know, if your national team's doing good, you're going to have more people watch, and you're going to have more people who maybe want to get involved. Soccer was here maybe two, three years ago, four years ago, but now soccer is, you know, really, really skyrocketing in America. So I think that the position we are right now, we just want to make the, the most out of it. As painful as it was for the U.S. to miss out on World Cup 2018, and that was a gigantic failure, it also hastened 
the move to a new generation of young players. And Weston McKinney is a big part of that future. In a lot of ways, I think it's really cool that we're finishing this journey here in, in Germany, in Dortmund with Christian Pulisic, because every young American player that we've talked to here is at a different stage in his journey in professional soccer. And Christian Pulisic, the most famous player of them all, has really had a, a remarkable trajectory here, coming to Dortmund at age 15, and now at 20, finishing up on his way to Chelsea, $73 million transfer fee, by far the biggest in US history. I'm looking forward to talking to Christian about his time in Germany now as he looks back on what I think will be a really important part of his life here and what he's gone through, the challenges he's faced and overcome as he heads to the English Premier League and joins Chelsea this summer. Also, nein, was Chio hat mir so am Trainingsgelände, der hat mir heute empfohlen, so diese Pasta, Patata, so mit äh, Kartoffeln und weißt du, was ich meine? Ich sag mal, ich sag mal mit Sandro Bescheid. Okay, äh, dann wenn nicht, dann so Pasta mit, ja, Tomatensauce, Reis. Okay, alles gut. klar. Ja. Ähm, nur stilles Wasser? Ja. Okay. ja. This guy at the training ground told me to order this, this like specialty, like. Oh really? So like I like tried to explain it, and he's like, okay, I'll go ask. Okay. Let's see. So, I imagine you're at a point now, toward the end of your time in Germany, where you can look back and feel really proud of what you've achieved uh, and the challenges you've overcome. What sort of stands out to you when you think back on your time here about? Uh, the process in Germany. Yeah, I mean, you know, people will never realize everything that I that I truly went through. Um, you know, right from the start, coming in, not speaking the language at all. Um, I went to a very completely normal German school. The the, the club just kind of tossed me into school. I didn't speak a word of German, and I was in a normal German school, which I didn't understand at first. So uh, it was a uh, yeah. The first year and a half was definitely you know the toughest time of my life. Just with that, um, because my, my days were literally school for you know maybe five hours, and then I'd go home, get a snack, go straight to the training ground, 90 minute German lesson, um, straight at the training ground, right after that, straight to the gym, straight to training at 6:30, and then straight home, and then I had to do it every single day for a year and a half, and that was uh, yeah, it was it was a tough time, you know, having to go into a new team and uh, yeah, be challenged right from the start, so. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that I look back on. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. You know, being away from my family is the hardest thing. And uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I missed out on a lot of school memories. You know, I'm, I don't get to go to college like a lot of kids do. But, uh, you know, it's all, I did it all for a reason. And uh, yeah, I don't regret it at all. What have you learned about Germany and the soccer culture here that makes Germany different, makes Germany Germany? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> It's all I really know, honestly. But uh, yeah, I think just uh, just the culture, even from a young age, when I was in the youth academy, starting at U17, I would just say how intense how intense it is every single day. And I think uh, just realizing what it meant to the kids that at a young age, you know, already in a real professional environment, it just felt so. Uh, yeah, just nothing I'd experienced before. It felt like people were really fighting for their spot and for a job every every week. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I had to you know be ready for that, and I had to learn that at the beginning. When you, someday when you're a lot older, maybe when you're done playing, look back on these years in Germany, what are you going to think about? Yeah, I'm just going to think of uh, what a great start uh, to my career it was. Uh, yeah. Just a place I'll forever be thankful for. I mean, you know, Dortmund has, has been great to me, and uh, I'll never take the opportunities they gave me for granted because it was everything. It's what. Uh, it's what allowed me to start here. It's what gave me an opportunity, you know, with the national team. It's what, uh, yeah, it was really just, uh, it was really everything. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just only have good memories from this place. That's all I can really say. It seemed like it was really important when the news came out that you were going to leave Dortmund that you communicated directly with the fans yeah. about your feelings toward them. Yeah. 
And that was, uh, that was the most important thing to me. I wanted them to understand, you know, why I'm making my decision. I want them to, you know, to get that. And I want them to also know how, how thankful I am for, for everything that's happened here. I want them to realize that I've loved every moment here and that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my best until the very end, until the last, last time I'm on the pitch, you know, representing Dortmund. So as we finish up this week-long trip around Germany to go to different soccer places and see young Americans playing here, it kind of fits that I'm talking right now while driving in the left lane of the Autobahn, which has no speed limit. Playing in Germany is an adrenaline-filled experience, and that becomes clear from everyone we've talked to. And it's something that you're feeling day by day by day. With all the success we see these American players having, I learn more about what the challenges can be that we don't see all the time. This sort of culture shock that comes with American players who come over here to live and play and even drive is all about getting out of your comfort zone. And that's not a cliche. It is a risk to come to one of the biggest soccer countries in the world and take the risk that you might not make it, but also the risk that you might make it. And if you're a young American player now, this country, Germany, is, is where you come to. Tyler Adams is 20. Christian Pulisic is 20. Weston McKinney is 20. But you know what? They can play. And that has to be tremendously exciting if you're a fan of the US national team and the future of what these guys might do together.